Welcome everyone to South Park Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are so glad you have chosen to join us today as we worship the Lord together and have fellowship. The house of God is such a special place to be. You may have heard people refer to a church congregation as the body of Christ. This is because the Bible explains each of us in, as individual members of one whole body. We hope that you will receive a rich blessing from your worship experience today. We're looking for you to join our Sabbath School panel discussions. Contact Elder Pedro McKnight at askthepastor7 at gmail.com and be a part of an in-depth, interactive study of the Bible each Saturday morning at 10.30 a.m. What's the 
church family it is good to be here on this evening being able to deliver the word of God to you let's jump right into the word this out this evening but before we do that let us pray dear Lord we thank you for bringing us here again on another prayer evening night Lord please speak to me and through me as I prepare to speak a word to your people I pray that this word from you lights us on fire with the Holy Ghost so that we may burn through the rest of this week all week long for your love and your passion. In Jesus' name, I thank you and I pray. Amen. Amen. The word this evening is going to come out of the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 5. Here's what it says. It says, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. May the Lord add a rich blessing to the hearers of his holy word this evening. I want to speak from the subject, the cross. Now, I want to go ahead and tell you, I'm not one of these fly-by-night Christians who believe that being a Christian means you won't have trouble. It's important for you to understand that so you can go through this process of suffering. John the Baptist points to this down at the Jordan River when he looks through the mass of people and sees a face in the crowd. Then says, Behold, the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sins of the world. Then the Bible says that Jesus came down into the water and told John to baptize him. Jesus, John said, no, I do not want to baptize you, Lord. But Jesus said, suffer it to be so that I might fulfill all righteousness. Now, let me help you understand that a little bit better. Jesus said, I want you to baptize me, John, that it might fulfill all righteousness so that my people can see that it is through death burial and resurrection that I'm going to deliver you from your past understanding you're not going to simply be the old person that you used to be trying to do better now if that has been your experience in the past I dare to say you have not had a real experience for a real experience with Jesus Christ is more than a new year's resolution it's more than feeling guilty about a whole habit you cannot break it's more than trying to rebuild an old house that needs to be torn down God says I'm not going to renovate your 
the old house. I'm going to bury it, wash it away, and reconstruct a new person where the old person used to be. What God did for Jesus on the cross was depicted in baptism. That ultimately Christ would go to the cross death be buried in the tomb burial and be raised on the third day resurrection that we might know him in the power of his resurrection as the apostles began to teach in the new testament they always refer back to what christ did on the cross as a point of reference so what i want to do this evening is talk to you from two points first point being the historical relevance of the cross now we must understand that as we live in today's society, that through communion, we are reminded. God said, as often as we do this, do this in remembrance of me. Don't forget what I did for you on the cross. Why does he want us to remember this? First of all, he wanted you to know how much God loved you, how far God will go to deliver you. This fact alone ought to deal with low self-esteem, fear, intimidation, feelings of unworthiness, feeling like you're nobody. You must be somebody. Look at how much God paid to get you out of trouble. Come on now, somebody. God wants us to use the cross as a historical reference to face today's challenges, to to say that if God had the power to take the sting out of death and get the victory out of the grave, surely he has the power to pay my rent next month. Y'all not listening to me. If God has the power to take the sting out of death, to go down into hell, shaking keys of deliverance, saying I am the master of hell, let my people go. Surely he has the power to deliver my children who have strayed away from the church. We must realize that if he rose up from the dead without human assistance, then he doesn't need your help to work out his will for your life. The same God that did it it back then can handle whatever you face right now now I know it's the first month of the year for some people it's about Martin Luther King and for other people it's about New Year's resolutions but for us here watching prayer meeting whether we've had a good day or a bad day whether we've got a little money or no money at all I'm just glad to know that he got up from the grave with all power in his hands somebody need to shout hallelujah in the comments right now let me move on to point number two here's point number two why we should remember the cross point number two is personal connectivity with Jesus Christ it gives us personal connectivity with Jesus Christ it is not enough to remember what Christ did from her historical perspective but we must be personally connected with the experience of Jesus Christ in the book of Romans, the sixth chapter, Paul teaches us that if we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. It is Paul that connects my life with Christ's experience, saying that not only did Christ have a cross to carry, but I will have to carry a cross too. Have you noticed life has its crosses? I'm not talking about the wooden ones that are displayed in many churches. We have all types of crosses, all types of equipment God uses to kill our flesh. Let me help somebody understand it. You know, sometimes your cross is your job. Y'all don't want to say nothing about it, but oh, you would have been arrogant. You would have been high-minded. You would have been proud, but you're in a situation on your job that is killing your flesh, and God knows exactly what it takes to nail your flesh down so he can get the glory out of your life. Somebody's cross is that you're living your life without a companion, and you thought surely you would be married by now, and even in the midst of you being single, you are seeing God's glory and unabashed imaginable ways but your flesh is being crucified to the cross because your flesh is denied human companionship 
If there's any comfort to my single people out there, I want to assure you married people did not get away without a cross. For some of them, their cross is sitting right beside them or in the kitchen or in the living room or right in the car with them this evening. Everybody thinks you're wonderful, but the person you're married to. Everybody standing beside you, but the person you're sleeping with. And like Paul, you say, remove this thorn from my flesh, Lord. But God said, my grace is sufficient for thee. And my strength is made perfect in weakness. Somebody don't want to say amen on that point. But if your cross is not laying beside you, it's in the room down the hallway. Come on now. Some of your children are your cross. Everything is going good, but your children are breaking your heart. Every time you take two steps forward, you get some news that knocks you three steps back, and your cross is not made of wood. You are nailed by the love you have for a child that sees indifferent to you there are all types of crosses that's why we ought to connect with this message this evening because Christ's story did not end on a cross and yours will not either I may be broke right now but I won't be broke forever I may be lonely right now I won't be lonely forever I may be burdened right now but I won't be burdened forever I may be in trouble right now but I won't be in trouble forever he didn't just die he was buried in early Sunday morning he got up Come on now, somebody. My God, he got up. Paul said, oh, that I may know him in the fellowship of his suffering and the power of his resurrection. You cannot experience resurrected power until you've had an experience with suffering. I know we like to put on a great smile. I know we like to put on our nice clothes. We got the church character down packed. But there are some folks listening today who have been through hell. I'm talking about would have liked to die, almost lost your mind, almost fainted, almost collapsed, almost went back, almost threw in the towel. But some kind of way God pulled you through the test, the storm, and the trial to God be the glory. Come on now, somebody. Slap somebody you next to and tell them I made it over. I've been slapped. I've been falsely accused. I've been down. I've been broke. I've been criticized by friends, rejected by loved ones. But I somehow I made it over Somebody still don't got it yet When I think of the goodness of Jesus And all that he has done for me Resurrection is more than history I'm having a resurrection right now Let's give God a hand clap of praise Amen, amen That's the end of the message Let's bow our heads for prayer And let's pray over the word today Dear Lord, we thank you for this power-packed word that you have fed us this evening, Lord. Keep this word on our hearts and on our minds. Help us to think about your cross as we go through our suffering. N remembering that suffering connects us closer with you, Lord. Keep this word on our hearts and minds so that we may not sin against thee. And Lord, carry us through the rest of this week. In Jesus' name, I thank you and I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.